around the world So when the call came, uh, we were suiting up, getting ready to go out and do a training mission. So I was already dressed out. We uh, just heard the call and already knew then to switch our job. We could take the same plane we were already going to take. When the initial call came in, the boat was currently in the middle of the channel. And then throughout the next couple of hours, the boat drifted towards the rocks and um, was very close to making contact with the rocks. They threw their anchor overboard and they were able to drag it until it caught on rocks under the water. I finally got the confirmation that they were at anchor and they weren't going to abandon ship and that sea tow was coming on scene and was hoping to tow them back. We saw clouds develop in the sun uh, ahead on our route. We had to make a decision about whether to go above those or, or below them. About a third of the way, uh, we got notified that a, a C-130 was also launched from Air Station Kodiak. So we asked the C-130 what the tops of the clouds were at and, and if, the, uh, if there was a good, safe way for us to be able to get down once overhead on scene. And uh, they were an extremely uh, beneficial asset because they advised us the tops were around 8,000 feet and that the ceilings were broken on scene. So we elected to climb. We ended up at uh, 10,000 feet uh, in route over the mountains of the Kenai Peninsula. Um, 10,000 feet is the max altitude of the helicopter, so we were uh, using, the, using the helicopter to, to the maximum of its capability in order to get there in the shortest amount of time and as safely as possible. Once we got on scene, CTO was next to them and they were able to actually float them a line and get hooked up. They felt that their towing evolution was successful, so they cut their anchor line. And as we turned base, they cut the anchor line, and all of a sudden, all mayhem went off. There was definitely a panic in everyone's voice over the radio. Identified that there really wasn't a lot of time to act, and we, we pulled into a hover about as fast as we could safely do. And, didn't have time to run the normal SAR checklists and briefs. We bypassed a fair amount of our standard procedures in order to be able to lower our rescue speed in the most time efficient manner possible. And I just had to change really quick, uh, just throw on a different helmet and some gloves, and I was ready and I was, we were out the door within a minute or two. Yeah, so after we hoisted the first two survivors, when I was heading out the door to get the last guy, the first guy, got my attention and told me that he had a dog on the boat and asked if I could get him. And uh, I definitely was kind of paused for a minute because the way we were hoisting everybody with the quick drop doesn't really fit a dog. And so I was like, I'll, I'll try my best. And when I got down on the boat, the other guy said, let me know. He was like, hey, we have a dog in here. And I was like, all right, let me see the dog and let's see if we can do this. And it was a small to medium sized dog. So I'm like, sure. And so I hooked up the last the last guy and then we both just kind of held on to the dog and we hoisted off uh, and got up the helicopter safely with uh, the last survivor and the dog. In this circumstance, uh, we were able to recover the third survivor and that dog um, about 30 seconds before the vessel impacted the rocks and started getting uh, smashed pretty, pretty hard into the shoreline. Um, so seconds did matter and frankly it speaks to the uh, the value of the training that we hold ourselves to and the, the standards that we have established for us all to follow so that we could react um, without having time for normal checklists, but still accomplishing what we needed to to set up and execute those hoists rapidly and safely.